Have you ever sat back for a minute or two and wondered how, the nature around us, and all of its components have evolved and obtained their present form? And what about life millions of years back? What did that scenario look like? In today's video, we are going to discuss just a small era of the large time frame of evolution. Before beginning this video, if you like the content that we post, and if you want to hear from us more, hit that red subscribe button, and press the bell icon to stay updated on our activities. The Eocene era began around 66 million years ago, and ended almost 23 million years ago, and is one of the three major divisions of the Paleogene era. The other two being the Paleocene Epoch, the preceding one, and the Oligocene Epoch, being the last phase of this age. And even in the Eocene era, there are divisions the early epoch, or the Presian age, spanning from 56 to 47.8 million years ago, the Middle Epoch, or the Lutetian age, spanning from 47.8 to 38 million years ago, and finally, the Late Epoch, containing the Bartonian and the Priabonian age respectively spanning from 37.8 to 33.9 million years ago. Diving into a bit of literature, we see that the Eocene is actually derived from two ancient Greek words, eos, meaning dawn, and kainos, meaning new. This etymology roughly translates the word Eocene into the phrase dawn of the new organisms, the organisms being both flora and fauna, which had appeared and existed during this age. Around 56 to 55.8 million years ago, the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum occurred. What is it? You ask? A brief period of intense warming and ocean acidification around the globe, which happened due to the release of enormous amounts of carbon gas into the atmosphere and the oceans. The end was marked by the Eocene-Oligocene extinction event, also known as the Grand Coupour. Moving on to the climate and atmosphere of this era, researchers say that there was a wide variety of climates present during those days. The beginning of the era was marked by high temperatures and gradual warming of the globe. But by the end of this era, the overall climate of the planet started to go down, with the ice reappearing at the poles at first, followed by the rapid expansion of the polar ice caps. The greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, particularly carbon monoxide and methane, played an essential role in maintaining the surface temperature of the planet after the initial heating of the planet. The end of the era led to a large sequestration of carbon dioxide in the form of methane clathrate, coal, and crude oil at the bottom of the Arctic Ocean. The overall change of the climate, as well as the atmospheric composition and properties also led to the reduction of many greenhouse gases in the air, the most noticeable reduction being that of carbon dioxide. During the Presian and Lutetian ages, the flora of the planet mostly comprised of tropical forests, extending across the stretches of the present African continent, both the Americas, and South and Southeast Asia, in Europe and in Russia, the flora would mainly be the paratropical forests. Plant life was even present in the polar regions, the fossils and preserved specimens of which have been found in the Ellesmere Island of the Arctic. You may say that the location of land masses then and now were quite different. So it could be the case that when these plants were present on the polar soil, the land masses could have been present on other horizons than today. It may be true for a few land masses, but geologists say that almost the entirety of the polar landforms would not have been placed more than a few degrees south of their present locations even back then. And it's not just the polar regions. Fossils of leaves and plant structures dating back to the Eocene era, similar to those of the tropics of South America, have been found in the U.S. state of Oregon and its surroundings too. And as we all know, Oregon is, in the least sense, a tropical area. This just goes to specify the extent of the tropical flora coverage about 56 million years ago. Diving into the animal life of the time, the fossils of that era prove that the birds and fish and many species of land animals had a lot of similarity to the life forms found in our age. From the beginning of the Eocene era, the mammals that has appeared on the surface of the earth had long, thin legs, feet and hands capable of grasping and clenching, and had differentiated teeth for chewing and tearing. 
These features make them quite comparable to today's apes and primates, and even us Homo sapiens, but there was one major difference. Unlike the properly developed bodies found in today's primates, the ones from the Eocene were dwarfed, with the average weight being no more than 10 kilograms, as fond from studying the fossil remains and teeth structures. In fact, if you compare the fossils of the Eocene era with those of the preceding Paleocene era, you will notice that there is a difference of almost 60% in their sizes in favor of the Paleocene fossils. They were even smaller in size than the animals that succeeded them. It is believed that this major size difference was due to the heated climate of that time. A smaller size of the mammals meant a better ability to cope with the high temperatures. Eocene birds include some enigmatic groups which bear resemblance to modern groups of birds, with many of them having descended from the Paleocene era. That's all for this video folks, hope that you found it informative and interesting. And if you did, please don't forget to like and comment, and share this video with your friends, take care, stay safe, and adios.